Good morning, and it's a joy for me to share a short devotional for today. Few weeks ago or months ago, I received a WhatsApp text which read like this. We serve a God who is able enough to open the mouth of a donkey and closes the mouth of a lion, and in both cases, God has a message. A very interesting statement. He opens the mouth of a donkey, closes the mouth of the lions, and in both, he has a message. We know the story where God closes the mouth of the lions. We read that in Daniel chapter 6. And my eyes fell upon where God actually opens the mouth of a donkey. Numbers chapter 22. So let me summarize this passage. The king of Moab recognized God's power in Balaam's words. So here is a king recognizing God's power in the words of Prophet Balaam. So he tells Prophet, hey, if you are blessed, people, they are blessed. If you are cursed, people, they are cursed. I see that. I can see God's power being manifested through you. So I want you to go and pronounce a curse upon the people of God, that is the Israelites. Now, the prophet prays about it, talks to God about it, and God says, no, no, I don't want you to do this. So now the king again sends a team of people to go and again convince the prophet to do it. But again, this man who didn't want to do it, there are a lot of gifts awaited for him if he is going to do the task. But here again, prophet Balaam doesn't want to give it. But the pressure was so much, finally he had to give in, and with the approval of God, he actually starts going to the Israelites. So he takes his donkey, and now he is on a ride to go towards Israelites, and probably he thought he would ask God at that point of time how he can handle that situation. I'm just trying to imagine what, what would be his mindset at that point of time. Now, as Balaam is traveling with his donkey, now the donkey stops. So as the donkey stops, he is getting very angry and frustrated. He beats up the donkey three times. And in Numbers 22 verse 28, the donkey gets to answer him. We have never heard a donkey speak, but here is what the donkey said. What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? So now Balaam begins to realize. Oh, oh, maybe there's something different here. It is God who is actually intervening and making the donkey speak. So in fact, we, when you read through that passage, you will find the angel was visible to the donkey, but Balaam was not able to see the angel who was actually standing guard or standing at that place. Now this is the passage that you will read in Numbers 22. Now, I am picking up few random thoughts for our meditation or for our insights this morning. You and I can be a seasoned man of God or a woman of God, but still be blinded to what God wants us to do. So the question is, what is blinding you today? Probably for this man of God here, money, power and the pressure blinded him to see what God wanted him to do. What is blinding you today? Are you under a tremendous pressure from your co-workers, from your friends, or from your neighborhood, or from your family that is blinding you to see what God wants you to do? Are, are you with people, influence, or is money that is blinding you from what God really wants you to do? And that's what happened here with this man of God. He was blinded to see what God wanted him to see. Greed probably drove the prophet. He would have imagined, oh, the king is willing to give me so much. Probably a liking. Oh, I wish I can have this. That could have been his thought. Let not greed drive our lives because it can blind us from seeing what God wants us to do. God speaks us through unexpected means. Many times we look out for answers from our known circles. We look out for answers from our family, our friends, 
or those whom we respect or from a church pastor or somebody who is an evangelist or some men of God or women of God. We look out for people like that, known people who we think have solutions to our problem. But here is the thing. The solution for the problem came from unexpected sources. There was a servant in Naaman's house. Probably we know the story from the Bible. Naaman was suffering with leprosy. The solution for his healing came from the tiny girl who was actually living in that house. A servant girl. Many times we don't get answers from the known circles, but rather God brings answers or brings guidance or brings instructions from places that we think can be left ignored or probably that we can forget it. And that's what happened. The donkey brought guidance at that point of time. It's easy to listen to God's voice from known circles, but it's hard to listen from unknown uh, circles. Just imagine, in the story, donkey speaking, would you listen to a donkey? Or you go to the Naaman's story, would you listen to a servant, that to a commander in chief? Would he listen to a servant? No, not at all. But there are times that God has answers from those unknown sources of influence. And I'm sure God has many around you who could be the answer for the challenges that you are facing. And I would also like to sh share with you, you may feel that you are such a tiny person. Maybe you are like a donkey. Nobody likes donkey. Nobody likes to own a donkey. If somebody sings very beautifully, you know what I am trying to say. They will say you are singing like a donkey. Not an animal that is soft after. People may want to have a dog at their home, but not a donkey. Probably no one wants to seek you. No one wants to come after you. You are not a desired kind of person. But let me tell you, you can be the powerhouse of influence. That's what happened even in Naaman's house. The girl was a servant. She was a maid, but she was such an influence there. God can use you. Don't think you are too small for God not to use you. Many times we think, oh, God uses only big men, big women of God, great saints and evangelists and things like that. No, not at all. God can use you, like how you use the donkey, how you use the servant at Naaman's house. Bala knew God very well. He was a prophet. He was not just a believer. But still, he was blinded. Today, you and I may say, well, I'm such a great worship leader. I'm a, such a good Bible uh, speaker. Or I interpret. I have these gifts. I have these talents. Well, well, we can keep adding on to the list. We can take pride in our positions and power and the influences that we have. But let me tell you, here is a prophet of God who was blinded. He couldn't see what God wanted him to see. This can happen to you and me. Let's stay grounded in God's word so that God will continually sort of open our eyes that we may see the things that he wants us to see and we may do the things that he wants us to do. It is better to be a donkey in the hands of God and to be used by him. This morning, are you looking to be branded as a man of God, as a woman of God or worship leader, whatever, I am not sure of how you would like to call yourself. Are you trying to brand yourself like that? Or are you trying to brand yourself to say, well, I am like a donkey and God used me. It's better to be a donkey in the hands of God and to be used by God. God speaks through unexpected means. Shall we pray? Dear Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for speaking to us. You speak through unexpected means. Let our ears be open to that so that we can hear you and do the things that you want us to do. Bless everyone who is listening, O oh Lord. Thank you for bringing your word. 
We ask all these in your precious name. Amen and Amen. Thank you and have a blessed day. God bless you.